Assalamu alaikum and hi everyone. Today, my partner and I will talk about tort law of negligence. In brief, the law of tort is part of the civil law. In this video, we will talk about what is negligence, the element of negligence, omission, and the exception to the general rule which omission may give rise to duty of care. Hi, my name is Shardatun Isha Benti Samsuri and my metric number is 053086. So, I'm going to talk about what is negligence. Negligence occurs when one fails to take good precaution to avoid causing injury or damage to another person. So basically, a person who careless and the carelessness uh, caused the accident. So, for a person or corporation to successfully sue for negligence, there are several factors that need to be addressed. Dictionary definitions, negligence means lack of proper care and attention. The tort of negligence protects various interests such as interests of physical integrity, interests in property, and economic interests. Winfield defined negligence as a breach of a legal duty to take care which result in damage undesired by defendant to the plaintiff. Next, the element of negligence. To constitute a negligent tort, there are four elements need to be fully addressed. First one, the presence of a duty. The defendant owed a duty to the plaintiff. Second, the breach of a duty. The defendant breached the responsibility. Third, causation. Actual injury or damage suffered by the plaintiff. And lastly, damages. The damage was reasonably foreseeable. Therefore, to win the negligent claims, the plaintiff must show that he was owed a duty of care by the defendant. The defendant failed in this, it caused him harm and the harm was foreseeable. Perhaps the most common example of a negligence claim is a car accident. These events are not accidental in most cases. My name is Sharifa Aisha binti Said Muhammad. Omission. The difference between an act and an omission as a legal wrong is that in the former, a positive act of the defendant causes harm to the plaintiff, but in the latter, an action on the part of the defendant causes harm to the plaintiff. An omission does not give rise to a duty of care through the general rule. The exception to the general rule. Firstly, where the omission is contrary to an existing duty to act, where the defendant has a duty to act and he does not to do so, this failure to act may give rise to liability. For example, a driver who does not brake his car at the traffic lights when the lights are red has clearly omitted to act, which omission may give rise to liability for any damage caused. Secondly, when there is a special relationship between the plaintiff and the defendant, this relationship includes those between employee and the employer, the parents and child among others. For example, the driver of a car was skilled in trying to avoid a child and the school authorities will help liable for letting the child out from the school and compound as the court found that it was foreseeable that the child would cause an accident. Thirdly, where the defendant has control over a third party who causes damage to the plaintiff. For example, a prisoner assaulted a fellow inmate in the home office was held liable for the fellow to prevent the commission of the assault. Fourthly, where the defendant has control over land or something that may cause danger if it is interfered with. For instance, an occupier of land has a duty to ensure the safety of his vis visitors. If he has anything dangerous on the land, he must take responsible steps to minimize or reduce or avoid any possible injuries to his visitors. Fifthly, the defendant may be liable if he fails to perform an act that has been promised to the plaintiff, which is there being no agreement or contract between the parties. That's all from us. Thank you for watching.